Hey, this is your favorite German compositor Sebastian Schütt with a few words about Nuke's Time Blur Note. I noticed that sometimes artists get a bit confused about when to use it, but even more important, when to use it in combination with the Note Time Blur Note. The Time Blur Note averages everything that goes through the note input using the specified shutter speed. That means if there's any form of movement or animated distortion going on, the note will calculate motion blur for you. It divides the frames into subframes specified by the divisions knob. Let's animate this shape's position from one frame to the next. With a division of 1, nothing happens. If I increase this number, Nuke will go in between those two frames to generate new, averaged images. The higher the divisions, the more images the node will generate. By the way, the division knob of the time blur node is not the same as the motion blur knob on the transform node. The motion blur knob is a rule of thumb kind of parameter. The division knob lets you accurately set the number of subframes. Now comes the important part. How does the time blur node know what happens in between? Well, it takes a look at the curves that have been generated for this animation. And along that curve, we have an infinite amount of values, if you will. So what happens if we pre-comp our animated shape? The information gets lost. There are no curves the node can look at. We will now take a look at some interesting observations. Let's talk about concatenation again. If you need to catch up on that topic, please have a look at my Unleashed the Node episode of the Transform Node in which I take an in-depth look at it. Alright, we take our two-frame animation. This time we only move the shape horizontally and switch motion blur on. Now we add a second transform right after. Just a little vertical shift and switch the motion blur on as well. The last node in this stack determines the motion blur filter that gets applied to the combined transformations. But what if for some reason I have to add a node in between that breaks concatenation? I'll end up with an incorrect motion blur. My roto shape gets blurred horizontally first and this result now gets motion blurred vertically. Instead of combining the transformations, I'll end up with two separate calculations. Let's turn off motion blur in both nodes and add a time blur node. The concatenation break is no longer in effect. Since there is no filtering applied, the time blur node checks all the nodes and curves all the way up. And if you're wondering, I can't replicate this with another transform node. The transform node will only pick up everything below the concatenation break. One node that uses the same approach as the time blur node is the scanline render node. It produces a slightly different, probably more accurate result. But again, as soon as you switch motion blur on in any of the upstream nodes, and there is a node in between that breaks concatenation, you will get wrong results. Here comes an important thing. There's a huge difference between breaking concatenation with any node versus breaking it with a no time blur node. The great node in our example will force the upstream nodes to calculate motion blur and any following calculations will take the upstream result and produce motion blur on top of it. This node cancels out motion blur calculation at all. The scanline render will only process nodes downstream from that node. That's why we only get the vertical blur coming from the second transform node. The next point is also important for animated shapes or elements in general. Depending on the shutter settings, it's possible that the scanline render or time blur node not only averages upstream nodes based on curves, but actual content. If we use our animated shape from the beginning and place it on the card, you can see that the shape of the next keyframe is already fading in. This happens because the scanline render and time blur node create subframes for this element. If you don't want this, you will also have to use the no time blur node here again. Also, if you pre-render the element, this information will also be lost. This could be important for when you're retiming plate elements, for example, and you place them on a card for repos without pre-comping. 
But even if you do pre-comp, depending on your shutter settings, you might get some unwanted frame blending. Of course, you have to choose whatever setting is needed for your specific project, for example, to match the live action camera settings. But if you only need it for motion blur calculation and want to avoid frame blending of your element, you can also use the no time blur node. So watch out if your results are looking softer than expected. This could be the reason. I hope this makes things more clear since it can get a bit confusing. If you want to learn more about unconventional ways of using the time blur node, I can only recommend visiting Chris Fryer's blog and watching his very interesting video about this topic. I'll post the direct links into the description of this video. My name is Sebastian Schütt and I'll see you soon.